In previous videos on this channel, we have discussed some of the most infamous and enormous predatory birds from prehistory, most notably the infamous Harst's Eagle from New Zealand, to the giant Furus Rakids or Terror Birds, and of course, the immense Argentavis from South America. I also tapped into some other less well-known prehistoric raptorial birds, most notably Gigantohyrax from the island of Cuba, and the similarly sized Woodward's Eagle from North America. However, the range of extinct predatory birds, specifically ancient birds of prey and owls, is exceptionally varied considering their long history, with many other species of ancient birds of prey and owls becoming exceptionally large and strange looking in their own regard. So from an unusually large ground-dwelling species of extinct Caracara, to possibly the largest owl the world has ever seen, here are 10 extinct raptorial birds you may have never heard of. Modern owl species do vary greatly in size, with some of the smallest species being among the smallest of all carnivorous birds alive today, while the largest can rival some eagle species in size. In the modern day, the three owl species most commonly recognised as being among the largest in the world are the Great Grey Owl, the Blackiston's Fish Owl, and pictured here, the Eurasian Eagle Owl. The Great Grey Owl is typically described as being the largest in terms of body length from beak to tail, reaching typically over a metre, whereas the Blackistons and Eurasian Eagle Owl are usually pretty close when it comes to maximum body weight and wingspan size, with larger individuals having wingspans of up to 6 foot across and weighing up to 8.8 .8 pounds in body weight. As large and powerful as these great birds are, however, they pale in comparison to the body size of the largest owl that ever lived. This is Ornimegalonyx, the Cuban giant owl, sometimes referred to as the giant running owl. An extinct species native to the island of Cuba, this giant owl is believed by many to be the largest that we know of in existence. This remarkable and fearsome species thrived on the island of Cuba until at least the late Pleistocene, where it lived alongside a range of other unusual animals, big and small. The size of Ornimegalonyx is quite extraordinary, and it would have been quite the alarming sight in real life, standing at least over three and a half foot tall or more. This owl had unusually long legs in relation to its body size and a short tail, making it vaguely resemble a gigantic burrowing owl, even though it was not closely related, hinting at a similar lifestyle. The long and powerful legs and feet of Ornimegalonyx would have likely made it a strong runner and adept walker on the ground, but unlike the comparatively dainty burrowing owl, this bird was exceptionally bulky and robust in its build, with recent estimates for Ornimegalonyx's body weight ranging between 9 and 14 kilograms. The great size of this bird, combined with its adaptations for hunting more on the ground, hence its long legs, as well as the fact that this bird had a reduced keel or breastbone, along with relatively short wings, indicated that it was likely flightless, or at the very least, near flightless. It is somewhat uncertain whether this giant owl was a strictly nocturnal, or partially nocturnal or crepuscular hunter in life, though it is almost certain it would have hunted much like most other owl species, using its superb vision and hearing to locate its prey. The island of Cuba in this point in time was quite the extraordinary place to see, with a variety of extraordinary creatures other than the owl itself also being present here. The beaches of the island were inhabited by monk seals, and the forests by ground sloths, some of which as big as a black bear. These unique creatures were all under the shadow of the gigantic eagle-like raptor Gigantohyrax, as we have discussed in a previous video which was almost certainly the apex predator of the island during the day at least. For when these island inhabitants weren't being hunted by the giant eagle-like raptor during the day, they were almost certainly having to contend with the giant owl. Ornimegalonyx was a formidable predator in life, hunting a wide range of other animals on the island, 
This prey range likely included a variety of ground-dwelling mammals, including selenodons, as well as some species of rodents on the island, some of which could reach up to the size of a capybara. This immense predatory owl may have even hunted some of the ground sloths present on the island of Cuba at the time, some of which, as previously mentioned, could reach up to the size of a black bear. Ornimegalonyx's main killing weapons were its very large and powerful feet and talons, which could grip prey with incredible force. It likely stalked its prey on foot and then pounced on it taking it by surprise, using its razor-sharp talons to aim for vital areas such as the prey's skull, as is seen with many modern owls today. These formidable weapons, combined with the owl's great size, made it one of the dominant predators on the island of Cuba alongside Gigantohyrax, thriving until the end of the Pleistocene epoch, with remains indicating that they likely died out sometime around 11,000 years ago. The Cuban giant owl was not the only species of extinct owl once present in the New World, for another giant species also lived in the Caribbean. This is Titopollens, or the Bahamas giant owl, a gigantic relative of modern barn owls, which could reach up to one metre tall and was almost as big as the previously mentioned Ornimegalonyx. The size of a large eagle, this huge species used to live in old-growth pine forest on what is now the Bahamas until at least as recently as the last ice age. Unlike the previously mentioned Cuban giant owl, which physically most closely resembled a gigantic burrowing owl despite lacking a close phylogenetic relationship, Titopollens was physically almost identical to a modern barn owl except for the size. It is believed that this species likely colonised the Bahamas in at least the last 400,000 years during a glacial period when particularly low sea levels made the islands more accessible to this bird. It is actually believed that the historical presence of this great owl in the Bahamas was the inspiration behind the legend of the Chick Charney, a mischievous goblin-like creature with three toes and the ability to turn its head all the way around. Many popular online sources refer to Titopollens as being a giant flightless owl, but in reality, unlike Ornimegalonyx, it actually had large robust wings and could probably fly quite well, much like a giant version of its modern relatives. Fossil evidence indicates that this great bird mostly hunted a species of large rodent endemic to the island as the mainstay of its diet, and considering its similarities with modern barn owls despite its great size, it seems almost certain it hunted them in exactly the same way as well. Caracaras are an intelligent and opportunistic family of predatory birds which resemble hawks in many ways, but in fact are more closely related to falcons. Many species, particularly the crested and striated caracaras, are among the most resourceful birds around and are both active predators and scavengers, being quite happy to find prey on the wing as they are on the ground, where their long legs are well adapted for walking and foraging. For this next extinct species, we're going to remain in the Caribbean, specifically on the island of Jamaica, for it was once home to an extinct relative of modern caracaras that was quite unique in many ways. The Jamaican caracara was similar in size to, if not slightly larger, than the biggest caracaras alive today, but was considerably heftier in build, with comparatively even longer legs. This would have almost certainly made this bird even more of an adept runner and walker on the ground than its modern relatives, for caracaras are well known today in being such effective hunters on the ground as well as in the air. As well as being proportionally taller and heavier in its build, the wings of the Jamaican caracara were also reduced enough to mean that it was either completely flightless or at the very least a weak flyer in comparison to its modern relatives. This unique species of extinct raptor lived alongside a range of other strange animals and birds, most notably the extinct Xenus ibis, an ibis which literally had club-like wings. As previously mentioned, modern caracaras are exceptionally smart and opportunistic birds, regularly scavenging the dead bodies of other animals, but also being very adept hunters, able to take a wide range of prey with their sharp taloned feet, as well as being unusually social among many other birds of prey species. 
Considering what we know about modern Caracara species in their behaviour and anatomy, it's therefore not entirely unreasonable to imagine that the Jamaican Caracara was much the same as these modern Caracaras, only slightly more terrestrial in its habits, and slightly larger as well. Likely being one of the top predators and scavengers on the island of Jamaica at the time, this fierce and intelligent carnivore likely saw many of the other birds and animals on the island, including the previously mentioned Xenocybis, as a potential source of prey. As a brief side note, this extinct species of large caracara reminds me a lot of the fictionalised caracilla, a giant flightless carnivorous bird present in the documentary series The Future is Wild. This fun and interesting series theorises how modern animals may evolve in the future, and in this context, the caracilla is theorised to be a descendant of modern caracaras that grew much larger and became a flightless predator once again. This coincidentally makes them very similar to the prehistoric real-life Furusrachids or terror birds as we have discussed in a previous video, which is interesting considering that in real life, Terror birds are actually considered to be related to falcons and caracaras after Cerimus, their closest living relatives. Woodward's eagle is an extinct species of prehistoric raptorial bird that I have discussed in detail on a previous video. This huge carnivorous raptor lived in what is now North America until as recently as the late Pleistocene, and was enormous in size, nearly as big as the infamous Haast seagull from New Zealand. It turns out, however, that this gigantic avian hunter was not alone in its environment at the time, and actually had a smaller but even stranger looking relative living alongside it. The Daggett's or Walking Eagle, scientifically referred to as Buteogallus Daggett Eye, was another species of peculiar bird of prey living in North America at this time. Remains of this extinct bird have been found in the La Brea Tar Pits and also in the Carpinteria Lagerstadt in Southern California. In life, this bird's habitat slightly included grasslands, marshlands, as well as brushy savannas and ponds. Based on its skeletal remains, the likely size of this bird in real life was clearly not as big as Woodward's eagle, but still fairly large, about a metre in body length, and a likely maximum wingspan size of over 196 centimetres across. Despite its common name, the Daggett's eagle was actually part of the Buteogallus family, which includes living species of raptor including the savannah hawk pictured here, which is theorised by many to be its likely closest relative alive today. The Daggett's eagle, however, was up to 40% larger than the average modern savannah hawk and had proportionally much longer legs as shown by its preserved remains. Analysis of the limb bones belonging to Daggett's eagle have shown that compared to most other modern raptors including hawks and eagles, Daggett's eagle had relatively little lifting power in their legs in comparison and their feet didn't seem to be able to grasp quite as effectively. Furthermore, Analysis of muscle attachments to the tarsal point in the bird's legs indicates a strong walking proficiency, suggesting that this bird spent much of its time hunting on the ground, hinting at a lifestyle much like that of the modern-day African secretary bird. Secretary birds are certainly capable flyers, but much of their hunting is on the ground, where they use their very long and powerful legs to roam across open savanna and essentially stamp small animals such as snakes and lizards to death with their strong taloned feet. It seems very likely then that the Daggett's eagle would have hunted in much the same kind of way, patrolling over open ground in Pleistocene North America, surrounded by a range of infamous prehistoric animals, stomping and kicking small prey to death with its powerful legs and feet. Gargano is a region in southeastern Italy with a long and interesting history, particularly when it comes to the fauna of its ancient past. Between 12 and 4 million years ago, during the late Miocene to early Pliocene, an array of unique and strange animals called what was then Gargano Island home, which was formed due to sea levels being higher back then than they are today. This range of bizarre wildlife included Garganornis, 
a gigantic flightless relative of modern-day geese and ducks, weighing up to 15 to 22 kilograms. The mammals on this island were also bizarre, including Hoplitomerix, a strange deer-like animal with bizarre horns on its skull. Alongside strange herbivores such as this, there were also others including Dinogalyrix, which was a strange relative of modern-day hedgehogs and moon rats, which was probably mostly insectivorous, but may have occasionally also hunted small vertebrates as well. And preying on most of these animals on this island at the time was likely the dominant predator of the island, Garganoetus, or as it's dubbed, the Gargano Island Eagle. This powerful predator was similar in size to many modern golden eagles, and various fossil materials of this extinct bird dating from the late Miocene onwards have been found in the Gargano Peninsula. With Gargano Island historically being home to a wide range of mammals, birds and reptiles, as we've briefly mentioned, Gargano eaters had a wide range of prey to choose from, and was certainly well adapted to living in this insular environment. With its large size and powerful talons, Garganoetus was an apex predator within its ecosystem, likely being able to hunt many of the other mammals and birds that called the island home. Eventually, however, it is believed that various changes, most notably changes in the climate and also in sea levels, had various negative effects on the island inhabitants. Difficulties in adapting to the changes in environmental conditions over time, along with reduction in food availability, is what most likely led to the extinction of Garganoetus and the other strange inhabitants of this bizarre island. Yet another unusually large owl species endemic to an island, the prehistoric Cretan owl was native to, as you may have guessed, the island of Crete in the Pleistocene. Mainland Eurasia today is home to the little owl, which is the closest living relative to the now extinct Cretan owl. This species is one of the smallest owls native to the continent, being barely over 20 centimetres long. The Cretan owl is actually believed to be a descendant of the little owl on the mainland, but is much larger, over three times larger in fact than the modern little owl, standing upright at over 60 centimetres tall. An interesting side note is that these birds belong to the genus known as Athene, which is a reference to the Greek goddess Athena, which is made interesting considering how she was often depicted being associated with these birds, therefore coincidentally matching up with the geographical location of this now extinct owl. The Cretan owl lived alongside a range of other unusual species, including the Cretan otter, a more robustly built version of today's smooth-coated otters. There was also Candia cervus, an unusual looking species of deer endemic to the island. As well as being much larger than the continental little owl, the Cretan owl also had proportionally longer legs than its smaller relative, which, although proportionally was still not as long as those of the burrowing owl, are still long enough to hint at a somewhat more terrestrial lifestyle, along with a few other anatomical characteristics. Preserved pellets of this unique owl species suggest that the mainstay of its diet was made up of the endemic mouse species Mus minotaurus on the island, though like modern little owls, it may have also fed on insects given the chance. Then again, its larger body size also indicates the potential ability to hunt even larger prey. The beautiful São Miguel Island is located in the archipelago of the Azores in the North Atlantic Ocean, just off the coast of Portugal. This isolated location was once the home of yet another species of island-dwelling owl, which was also adapted for a semi-terrestrial lifestyle, the São Miguel Scops Owl. It was a relatively small species, standing at around 18 centimetres tall, and would have likely resembled the Eurasian Scops Owl still alive today, but with some crucial anatomical differences. For one thing, the Sal Miguel Scops owl had considerably shorter wings than those of the Eurasian species, around two-thirds the size, indicating that it was a poor flyer in comparison. It also had proportionally longer legs than its main and relatives, up to 12% longer in relation to its body size, further indicating its more terrestrial lifestyle 
spending more of its time hunting and perching on the ground. Interestingly, São Miguel had no native mammals or reptiles of its own at the time, so the majority of this small owl's diet likely consisted of small invertebrates such as insects or spiders on the ground, while it was itself potentially prey for larger predatory birds. This species actually survived until much more recently compared to most of the other birds on this list, dying out at around the 15th century, likely caused because of humans arriving on the island and introducing invasive species while also causing habitat destruction. The Jove falcon is one of the most striking birds to be found in the northern hemisphere, a truly well adapted species for life in the cold. For centuries, this impressive falcon has been revered as the bird reserved for royalty within the sport of falconry, a powerful and impressive hunter often used to hunt some of the larger and more challenging kinds of avian and ground game. They are also on average the largest falcon in the world, with specimens ranging from 800 to 1800 grams in weight, varying of course between males and females. What some may not realise, however, is that there was once a paleo subspecies of this mighty falcon in the past, which may have been an even more impressive animal in some ways. Fossils dating from the late Pleistocene have been found in North America, specifically in locations including Little Box Elder Cave in Wyoming and Dark Canyon Cave in New Mexico. These remains confirm that there was once a variant of Jure falcon which used to call these areas home during the last ice ages. These ancient Jur falcons are referred to as Swarth's Jur falcons and would have been around the same size as some of the larger individuals seen today, with some of the strongest females being even larger still. Interestingly, these ancient Jur falcons also differed slightly in their ecological ways to the modern American Jur falcons, being somewhat more adapted to a somewhat more temperate semi arid environment, features that were surprisingly widespread across their range during the last ice age. These Ice Age steppe inhabiting populations of Jure falcon likely lived in an ecological manner more like that of modern Siberian Jure falcon populations today, and also American prairie falcons in some regard. Their diet would have likely consisted mostly of land living birds and mammals, compared to the modern American Jure falcons, which feed more on birds both from the land and also at the coast. The larger size of these ancient Jur falcons may be because of the fact they had simply a larger food supply at the time, though it's more likely that the reason they were larger is simply as a result of Bergman's rule, for the larger you are, the more heat you retain in cold conditions. Most are aware of the mighty Haast's eagle, the largest and most powerful eagle we know of in existence, for this is yet another popular species I have done a video on previously. But as immense as it was, the Haast eagle was not the only unusually big raptor native to the island of New Zealand in the ancient past, for there was another raptor which, although not as big, was certainly large compared to its modern relatives. Nowadays, there are only two species of diurnal birds of prey native to the islands of New Zealand, the New Zealand falcon and the New Zealand swamp harrier, the Swamp Harrier was not the only species of Harrier once native to New Zealand, however, as there was another species that grew even larger, the Isles' Harrier. In fact, it is now believed that the Swamp Harrier only made it to New Zealand after the Isles' Harrier became extinct, basically filling in the role it left behind after it died out. Furthermore, phylogenetic analysis suggests that the closest living relative of the Isles' Harrier is the Australian Spotted Harrier, from which it diverged from around 2.4 million years ago. Isles' harriers were large birds, especially by harrier standards, with larger individuals having wingspans over 6 foot across and weighing up to 3 kilograms, making them comparable in size to a small golden eagle. Modern harrier species, including the still living swamp harrier, are known for having a relatively lightweight yet still strong build with long broad wings and a long tail, making them both strong and buoyant flyers. Most species hunt by flying relatively slowly over open ground, scanning below for prey using their keen vision. In the case of the modern swamp and marsh harriers, 
Wetland habitats are typically preferred, hence their name. Many species will often hunt quite small prey in relation to their body size, such as small rodents and other mammals, but with their strong taloned feet, larger species, including the UK marsh harrier and particularly the New Zealand swamp harrier, are capable of sometimes taking birds closer to their own body size, including larger water birds and even sometimes mammals ranging up to the size of a rabbit or hare. Considering its even larger body size, the Isles' harrier almost certainly hunted its prey in much the same way as the modern swamp harrier, only on a larger scale, more frequently being able to take prey weighing over a few kilograms. Although bearing in mind, mammalian prey was not present on New Zealand until more recently in history, so much of its prey originally was probably birds. A common reoccurring theme you may have noticed in this video is that many of these extinct raptors are essentially giant versions of their modern smaller relatives, particularly if they're on islands. This is a case of island gigantism, where species from the mainland, especially relatively small species, can become gigantic in the presence of more food on an island, as well as fewer sources of competition or predation. Isles' harrier eventually became extinct sometime after the Polynesians arrived at New Zealand, though it definitely seems to have survived a bit longer since the arrival than the Haas seagull did. The early history of the falcon family is somewhat mysterious, though what we do know through phylogenetic evidence is that they are closely related to parrots and perching birds, as well as Cerayimus and in turn the terror birds. The fossil record consisting of early species within this family group is fairly limited, as is with many species in the past, although there are some fragmentary species that are known from relatively recently found remains. For the final species on this list, we're going to take a trip closer to home, in the UK in fact, most specifically the London Clay Formation in Essex, England. In 2022, a new species of predatory bird from the ancient past was described from this formation. It has been named Daniel's Raptor Forus racoides. Daniel's Raptor lived far earlier than any other bird featured on this list, during the early Eocene, around 55 million years ago, which is not that long after the death of the non-avian dinosaurs. Although Daniel's Raptor is known from relatively fragmentary remains, scientists have a pretty good idea of what the bird actually looked like in life. For instance, the ulna, one of the bones present in the wing, seems to be well developed in Daniel's raptor, hinting it was a good flyer, and it also had proportionally long legs and a long tail, much like modern caracaras. These are indications that Daniel's raptor may have looked and maybe even hunted much like modern caracaras, which are themselves part of the Falconidae family. However, Daniel's raptor also had an unusually large and well-developed hooked beak, showing many convergent similarities with the infamous terror birds, a fact that is referenced in its species name, Forus racoides. With physical features similar to that of both falcons and caracaras, as well as terror birds and their close relatives, Cerayimus, it seems to suggest that the common ancestor of both of these groups was in fact a long-legged, mostly ground-hunting predator, which over time led to the increased diversification and specialisation of birds resembling modern caracaras and falcons today, along with their close relatives. <laughs>